You know, the, the, this I was so scared coming into this session because I didn't think I had enough music. I mean, I just didn't think I had enough music to, to make a, a full record. And you always want to have a little bit more than what you really need so that you have something to choose from at the end of the session. You know, if you're going to put 10 songs on a record, you'd like to have 15 or 20 just so you can pick and choose what you think are the best things. But um, I don't know how, but like in the last four days before I came here, suddenly there was just this, uh, these tunes started coming to me. Uh, most of them were the simpler of, of the, the songs, you know. I knew what we needed, I knew we had what we had. We had some fast jazz tunes. Um, we had, uh, you know, uh, well, I can't even remember all the details, but what we needed were some, you know, something, like you said, with, with something with some soul. We needed a gospel tune. We needed a, a funky blues type tune. Um, and those tunes just came, they just came to me like, uh, I couldn't believe it. Like right at, right at the, uh, right in the 11th hour, <laughs> right before the session, a couple of days. And literally, and I'm still not finished with one of the tunes we haven't tracked yet, so I gotta run that by John Keane and get his expertise on the arrangement, and uh, hopefully we'll have another kind of funky blues tune to do. Uh, late at night, you can't really play loud. And some of those tunes, you need to play loud to find the inspiration for that type of a tune, like a nasty, guttural, funky blues tune. Um, so what would happen was I was playing all night and that's where the jazz tunes come because you're playing super quiet. And you know, you can, you can think about harmony, you can think about chord changes. But when you, when you need to uh, just have a release of guttural, primal, blues type thing, uh, there's no substitute for me <laughs> other than cranking the amp up. Um, which and, and grabbing a different instrument like a baritone guitar and a baritone guitar it's tuned super low you know and it, it's 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 it produces a different vibe and when you play it, it if you don't pick one up for a while and then you grab it you'll get a new tune it just, it just happens almost instantaneously you just pick it up start playing and you're like whoa what's that and you, you find something so that's an inspiration I think there are there's just aren't any other, there are very few guitar players on the planet that can do what Jimmy does. Um, and it's every time, I, just listening to him play the basic tracks, uh, is I'm just in awe of the, just the never ending flow of amazing stuff that comes out of him. I met Jimmy, uh, I was on tour with John McLaughlin, guitarist, and uh, we played somewhere in uh, Boston at the House of Blues, then I met this guy, uh, <laughs> guitar player. I saw him play and he just blew my mind. I've, I've known Jimmy for a couple years. I met him um, when I was playing with Colonel Bruce and the Code Talkers. And um, he came out and did some shows with us and that's how we met. And then uh, we, we became friends and I uh, did a, a tune on his last record and uh, that was an amazing experience. He's one of my hero, musical heroes along with all the Aquarium Rescue Unit uh, guys, Jeff Seip, O'Teal, Matt Mundy. And so it's a total honor to be a part of anything uh, that Jimmy's doing. His tunes are, they're tricky. <laughs> they're tricky. I'm really happy to be a part of this record. Um, this is the second one of Jimmy's solo album set him on. And i um, really, really happy to be playing his music and <clears throat> um, playing with all these people that are surrounding it and involved with it and everybody's just a world class you know and Jimmy's the nicest sweetest guy in the world and he's uh, fantastic I don't know if he's a better player or a nicer guy I don't know which is which uh, playing with Jimmy is, is great he makes things uh, incredibly easy I uh, been playing with him probably for about five or six years uh, met him through playing with O'Teal Burbridge and um, got to record his last album with him and uh, then he asked me to come back and, and do this next album with him so uh, I'm really glad to be here, and, and uh, looks like it's turning out really well. I love it. It's uh, it's got a mixture of uh, what I'd call science and barbecue. There's uh, you know obviously heady jazz tunes, and then uh, there's some two beat stuff that sound like it came from the '30s. It's great. Etienne, 
it's funny to me how, uh, you know, I'm, I'm intrigued by music from other cultures. I mean, most musicians are. No matter where they're from, they're intrigued by music from other places. Um, like Indian music for me is just so intriguing. So, you know, um, African rhythms, you know. Um, now, I haven't studied this stuff to the degree that a lot of people I know have, but I'm, I feel a lot from it, and I like to draw from what little bit of it I know about. And I'm only imagining that maybe he, for some reason, being from Cameroon, but, but living in Paris and being all over the globe all the time, he probably never heard redneck jazz before. <laughs> so maybe that somehow like made him curious or something. And he wanted to play with us, so we were like, are you kidding? Let's book him, book him a plane ticket, let's get him here, you know? If he's available, please, let's get him here. Bill Evans, wow. I never thought I would ever meet Bill Evans. He knocked me out. I thought, wow, you know, this guy's amazing. Tenor sax player. Can play other saxes too, obviously. Um, you know, and then I I heard him with Miles Davis. I and mean, he stayed, he was Miles' buddy for a long time, like his right hand man. And uh, to me, that's like, you know, when, you know, that's that's pretty high ranking. <laughs> I mean, I would say about as high as it gets. And uh, you know, I met him at that Christmas jam that Warren had last year, the same one where Bela Fleck uh, and Jeff and I got to play with Bela Fleck, and so did Neil. Bill and I had a connection instantly, and, and it I'm freaking out. I, I met Bill Evans, and he wants to play. I can't believe it. So I'm thrilled to death to get, to get him to play with us. He's going to play on some tunes and hopefully do some live gigs with us sometime down the road. Bela Fleck's in a class by himself. The guy is like the Miles Davis of, of the banjo. Uh, the guy can play jazz, he can play bluegrass. As traditional as you want to get, he can do it. But he can also stretch the boundaries of just about anything. Man, the guy's on another level. And so, you know, but I got the chance to play with him uh, uh, more than once, but the most recent time was at Warren Haynes' Christmas Jam. And um, uh, we just connected and I thought, wow, you know, this was so cool. I wonder if he might be interested in uh, playing on a tune. And so I just sent him an email and he said, yeah, he'd love to. So I'm thrilled to death about the chance to play with Bela. Nikki Sanders is a, a fiddle player with uh, Steep Canyon Rangers. And uh, man, I saw him play a couple of times and he just knocked me right out of my seat. He, uh, their band is amazing. They, every one of the guys in the band are amazing. They're, they're uh, they're playing bluegrass and they're using traditional acoustic instruments and the microphones and you go see him and it's just a really great time and uh, he's quite a virtuoso. Um, he's just a monster. John Keane, um, I've, I've been a fan of his for a long time. I've, uh, his work around here is legendary. He's worked with all kinds of people, you know, uh, that have gone on to have great success. Too many to name, you know, all of them. And uh, but the first time I really got to work with him was with Widespread Panic, and I'd been in their band for a few years, and I'd been learning the music from their previous albums. And you know, there was four of them in a row that were done with John. Uh, and man, they are sonically so incredible. These records, I mean, they sound so good. The sounds are so good. The drum sound, the vocals, the the guitar sounds. I mean. It's all so cohesive and he's just, I was really impressed with his work and um, always wanted to work with him. And uh, after getting to do Panic's last record with him, I knew that when I wanted to do something different, you know, apart from, from that, uh, you know, I, I knew I wanted it to be him. I was hearing it on the upbeats. <laughs> and I, knew, I was like, okay. That's all right though. I mean, we were, you know, I felt good. playing. Yeah, we were, felt good. <laughs> <laughs>